Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will give a brief introduction to a neural network called the Liquid City Machine. Also, I will talk about the neuromorphic system we developed for it. In order to understand this concept, I guess we should first talk about water. As is well known, life on Earth could not live without water. So water must have a lot of amazing properties. Although we don't pay much attention to it, water can be really powerful sometimes. And the main focus here in this work, the liquid city machine has a lot to do with water. Before we talk about the liquid city machine, let us first make a thought experiment. That is, what will happen if we toss rocks, a lot of rocks, or small stones into a glass of water? Of course, we can get a lot of ripples and waves. However, we can toss different atoms to the different locations of the glass of water at different times, which makes many different patterns. And this glass of water will generate unique response for each particular input pattern. And considering the nature of the liquid, some researchers believe that the difference between these patterns can be amplified by the water. And a famous philosopher whose name is Bruce Lee also had some famous comment on the power of water. This is what it is, okay? I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Before we talk about the neural networks, let us first take a look at the biological neuron. As shown in this figure, a biological neuron consists of many dendrites, a cell body, and also an exon. The connection between two neurons is called the synapse. Obviously, a biological neuron is a multiple input, single output system. The neuron can receive stimulations from the dendrites, so the membrane potential or the membrane voltage of the neuron can be increased. When the membrane potential is higher than the threshold, this neuron fires and sends out a spike to the axon. This process can be illustrated by this animation, which demonstrates how the membrane potential changes over time. This work utilizes the famous leaky integrated fire neural model, and the neural dynamics of this leaky integrated and fire model are described by these equations. But in this video, I'm not going to talk about the mathematics of the neural models too much. And for more details, please take a look at the following reference paper. Now it's time to talk about liquid state machine. Liquid state machine was first proposed by Wolfgang and Henry in 2004, which is a really powerful recurrent neural network, which closely resembles the biological structure of the human brain. The liquid state machine consists of an input layer, a reservoir, and also an output layer. The reservoir contains a group of neurons randomly connected by the fixed synapses, and it can map the input signals to higher dimensional liquid response, which will be later projected to the output layer to plastic synapses. The liquid state machine has a biologically plausible structure which make it very competent for processing temporal patterns, such as speech signals. And usually, a supervised learning is performed on the output layer, which updates the synaptic weight of the plastic synapses, which have been uh, highlighted by the red dashed circle in this figure. And uh, now it's time to talk about uh, the learning or the training of the liquid state machine. The training of the liquid state machine is based on a biologically plausible learning rule which applies a heavy and local learning. 
what does that mean? This means that the synaptic, uh, the synaptic plasticity involving uh, maybe two neurons or multiple neurons only depends on the neighbors, only depends on, on its neighbors. And also, the calcium concentration of the neuron is used to characterize the long-term firing activity of this neuron. And the calcium concentration is updated by the equation in the following figure. As we can see, every time the membrane potential reaches the threshold, this neuron fires and its calcium concentration C is increased. If there is no firing activity for a long time, the calcium concentration C will drop over time. So it will help uh, the network to capture the long-term firing activity. And because we are trying to uh, realize a supervised learning rule, a teacher signal is injected into each output neuron to modulate its membrane potential. Since the firing activity is influenced, the update of synaptic weight is also modulated by this teacher signal. For example, the output neuron corresponding to a particular input pattern will be potentiated by the teacher signal, while the other output neurons will be depressed by this teacher signal. So according to the following equations, the synaptic weights associated with each output neuron are only updated when the calcium concentration of the neuron is in the correct region. And again, I'm not going to talk about uh, the details of these equations, and uh, you know, in order to learn more about this mathematics, you can go to the original reference paper of this work or the original paper by Wolfgang and Henry in 2004. From now on, I will talk about our neuromorphic system to show the advantage of the hardware machine learning. In this area of big data and machine learning, there are growing concerns in device reliability and energy consumption for the traditional Van Neumann architectures. Meanwhile, the Van Neumann machines also consume tremendous power, energy, and space resources. However, the brain-inspired neuromorphic computing provides an appealing architecture solution which shows great efficiency in terms of both hardware cost and also the runtime. In addition, the inherent error resilience offered by the brain-inspired neuromorphic system is very suitable for large-scale integration in the VLSI technology. In this work, we developed a parallel hardware architecture for liquid state machine. Let us first start from the implementation of the reservoir. First, we implement multiple parallel liquid elements to calculate the liquid response. Then, a crossbar switch interface is used to send the external input spikes to their target liquid element. At the same time, the output spikes of the liquid element are recorded by a register called the liquid response. And another crossbar interface feeds the liquid response back to the liquid element. And meanwhile, the liquid response is sent to the output layer as a simulation. The output layer of the liquid state machine is implemented as the training unit, and the output neurons are implemented with the output element. The plastic synaptic weights are stored in the BRAMs, which are the on-chip memory resource of the Silex FPGA. And each output element receives the liquid response from the reservoir or the reservoir unit to update the corresponding synaptic weight in parallel. Uh, to realize the uh, supervised learning, a uh, teacher signal is used here to modulate the firing activity of each output element. And this implements a particular form of Habian learning. Now it's time to talk about the design details of the digital liquid neuron, namely the liquid element. According to the algorithm, each liquid element updates the membrane potential based on the four state variables. And these four state variables are calculated by a functional block called the synaptic response unit. This unit is realized by basic logics such as adders, shift bit registers, and um, multiplexers. So this is really efficient uh, thanks to a hardware-friendly algorithm we are utilizing in this work. 
As mentioned earlier, the output neuron is realized by the output element, which updates both the membrane potential and the calcium concentration. And the four state variables are still calculated by the similar synaptic response unit. However, this time, each state two neuron needs to communicate with its private BRAM in order to train the neural network, namely to update the synaptic weight. And also, a teacher signal is needed here to modulate the membrane potential of each output neuron. And four popular public domain benchmarks of real-world applications are used in this work. And two of them are for the speech recognition and the other two for the, uh, for the image recognition. And as we can see, decent uh, recognition rates have been achieved for all these benchmarks. In this work, we use the Silence FPGA as our platform. The hardware liquid sim machine is attached to the AXI bus of an SOC at a customer IP. For each benchmark, our FPGA accelerator can achieve over 80 times speed up over a software counterpart running on a general purpose CPU of 2 GHz. Uh, this is really fast due to our highly parallelized implementation, and the following figures show the experimental setup and the signals of our liquid machine IP core. For more information, please take a look at our recent papers listed here. And that is all for this video. Hope you can find something useful. Thanks for watching.